Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Y'all, your boy Devon Toro, and welcome to another Help Me Devon tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon tutorial, I'll be showing you guys a trick that I hope that you're using when it comes to your reverbs and vocals. Now, within this trick, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to apply reverb to your vocals, but at the same time, still maintaining that transient, that impact, that clarity of the vocal at the same times. A lot of times when we apply reverb, sometimes what we wind up doing is making a vocal sound that feels washed out and loses some of that fidelity and impact in the entire mix. So I'm going to show you a few things that you can pay attention to inside of your actual reverb plugins to help you mitigate that while giving you that feeling and emotion that you love and want from your reverb. Let's get to it. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to play you one of my own songs. Uh, it's unmixed. I'm just going to exaggerate a few things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you this vocal within the mix without my reverb at all. Then I'm going to engage my reverb back and forth, uh, bypassing it uh, as we go. What I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to the impact, the clarity, and if you feel like the vocal just completely gets lost or not when the reverb is engaged. Okay, without first. You got me sitting in your driveway, looking at you sideways, cause you getting down like that. Leaving from your crib back to my place, argue on the highway, cause everything you said was facts. Cause you can't tell me how you feel, cause I'm overreacting. Call all them words, I should speak with my actions. I know that we argue sometimes, but it's just emotions. You know how this goes. Okay, so when you listen to the difference between the dry and the reverb signal, you notice from an emotion standpoint that when the reverb is applied, you feel emotion. You could feel like, oh, there's the emotion, but you don't feel like you lose so much of the clarity and the impact of the original vocal. Now I'm gonna show you an example of what not to do and how to get these settings and pretty much how to go about these things. It's a very, very powerful trick that I hope you guys are using. Please stick with me, you're gonna enjoy this. Also, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. It would really help us a lot on this channel. Now, one other thing I do want to mention is I exaggerated the reverb. I probably wouldn't want that much reverb in the sound, but for the sake of the tutorial, I exaggerated the reverb just for you keyboard warriors out there. Okay, cool. So let's solo the vocal. And what we're going to do is we're going to crack open our reverb. Now, the reverb that I'm using is the Pro R from Fat Filter. And there's a really, really good reason why I'm using it for the sake of this tutorial as well. What we're going to be figuring out and what parameter I want you to pay attention to to maintain clarity, punch, and all those things is pre-delay. Now, I know what you may be saying. I know what that is. I've seen it, etc. But are you truly using it in the way to make sure that you're getting uh, a the impact of feeling the energy uh, of the original dry signal versus the impacted signal that comes with the reverb? Long story short, pre-delay. Pre-delay is basically the difference between the time of the dry signal and then the onset of the reverb signal, the early reflections in the tail. Why is this important? Why do we care? Well, think about it like this. If you have or are applying a reverb, right? And you take that reverb and say, for instance, this is the dry and this is the reverb. If you say, okay, slap the reverb on. This right here is like having a zero millisecond pre-delay, meaning as soon as the, ver the vocal comes through, I want that reverb to be right on top of it. Thus, this can make it sound a little different. This can bring back the energy, make it kind of feel a little bit more washed because there's really nothing cutting through. It's right on top of the actual dry signal. Now, let's say, for instance, I take a pre-delay or I take my pre-delay and I just say, let's make the pre-delay 30 milliseconds. Now what's happening is my dry signal is cutting through a little bit of that 30 milliseconds before the reverb is even heard or felt. What does this accomplish by having a longer pre-delay to allow that dry signal to cut through? Well, I think that if I'm saying that, you kind of get the idea. If you allow the dry signal to have a little bit of time to start, to begin, uh, as far as being the first thing that comes out, then your reverb sound isn't going to really influence or impact or pretty much wash out that original sound as far as the dry signal is concerned, which will maintain clarity, presence, all those kind of things from your initial transient information when it comes to your vocal, okay? so. 
I'm gonna show you this example and show you how this kind of works as far as how I use it personally in this. Okay, so right now, the reason why I believe that FabFilter has such a dope feature is because they have a act, an actual tempo lock or uh, indicator for your pre-delay times. Now you may be saying, what do you mean? Well, I don't wanna get mathematical, but say for instance, if I'm trying to figure out the quarter note um, delay or the, the eighth note reverb time or decay, yes, musically, I can figure these things out with math. For instance, if the BPM of the song is 100, then basically what I would do is say 60,000 divided by 100, and that would give me, uh, as I divide by two, the quarter note, the eighth note, the 16th note, the 32, et cetera. What the Fab Filter uh, Pro R already does is it's doing this calculation already for you based on the tempo in the section, which I'm pretty sure that's how it works as far as how Fab Filter has it integrated, but it's basically creating that note delay uh, based off of information that it's seeing come in. So with that being said, now it's saying, hey, when you hear me or when you get my signal, I want the reverb to wait a 16th uh, of, of a note or time. I, I would give you the exact number, but it's really, really small. But basically it's allowing a little bit of space to happen with the dry signal before the wet signal has happened in a timing of 16th. Stay with me. Shout out to my producers out there. So without all that math and all that other stuff, I'm just going to show you what it sounds like. So remember, this is this pre-delay is allowing the dry signal to come out a little bit first before it actually onsets and brings on that reverb. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. This is, I want you to take a listen to this. I'm going to solo this. Yes. And what I want you to do is I want you to listen to what this sounds like with the pre-delay with the pre-delay at zero, meaning reverb immediately. You got me sitting in your driveway, looking at you sideways, cause you getting down like that. Leaving from your crib back to my place, argue on the highway. Cool, now let's listen to it with a 16th note. Timing. You got me sitting in your driveway, looking at you sideways, cause you getting down like that. Leaving from your crib back to my place. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass it back and forth. So I'm gonna go between the zero pre-delay and the 16th note pre-delay. Check this out. So. Zero pre delay first. You got me sitting in your driveway, looking at you sideways, cause you getting down like that. Leaving from your crib back to my place, argue on the highway, cause everything you said was facts. Cause you can't tell me how you feel, cause I'm overreacting. Call all them words, I should speak with my actions. I know that we argue sometimes, but it's just emotions. You know how this goes. So what you notice, and it's slight and it's subtle, is you notice a pop in the vocal when I take the pre-delay and increase it a bit or add the 16th note, which I hope that when I say note, you guys are understanding what I'm saying, 16th time as far as where it lands. Um, when you increase that pre-delay, you're giving that dry signal just a little bit more space to cut through, as opposed to when I have it on zero, you notice that it kind of engulfs the entire sound and kind of loses a little bit of that punch of the vocal. As soon as I put that 16th on, as far as the timing or crank up the pre-delay a bit, you notice the vocals kind of just, whoop, just kind of come up just a little bit more and kind of maintain that presence and clarity. So that's really it as far as the technique. I really hope you're trying this and using this. I also use this for my plate verbs as well, only I probably use a much, much shorter um, note time, somewhere in that 128th, I really something really, really short for the pre-delay because I don't want to notice too much of a doubling with some of my plates. That's a case-by-case -case basis. But I hope you enjoyed that. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on Instagram. Also, make sure you visit helpmedevon.com for that HMD Rosetta EQ. It would really appreciate you guys going and grabbing that as well. Also, make sure you listen to the My Audio Nurse podcast every Wednesday. We drop those on Spotify as well as Apple uh, podcast and we drop on this channel as well with the video. Um, I really hope that was helpful uh, and until next time you guys.